Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis. And as always, many many thanks to all the nice people that support me on Steady or PayPal. Today in part 9 we will talk about subsequences and accumulation values. For this let's immediately start with a picture of a sequence on the real number line. There we have a lot of points called a1, a2, a3 and so on. Now the term subsequence is not so hard to understand, we just omit some members of this sequence. For example, we can take the first one, but then omit the second one, but then take again the third one and the fourth one, and then omit some other ones. The only thing we need is that we still have infinitely many members. So we still have a sequence in the end. However, then we need a new name for the sequence members, because a sequence is a map from the natural numbers into the real numbers. Therefore, the first member needs the index 1 and the second member the index 2. Therefore, usually we use n as an index with an additional index. Hence, here you should see n with index k is a sequence of natural numbers. Moreover, it needs to be strictly monotonically increasing. This simply means that for all sequence members the successor gets strictly greater. Then in this case the sequence with index k here is called a subsequence of the original sequence a n. So this is our first definition for today. We are allowed to omit some members but then we need a new enumeration given by n k. Ok, maybe it gets clear when we look at an example. For this let's take a sequence we already know. Namely a n is given by 1 over n. Now the question is what is the subsequence when we choose n k as 2 to the power k. Please note this is a possible choice for the sequence n k because 2 to the power k is a sequence of natural numbers that is strictly monotonically increasing. Now this means in the original sequence here we will omit all the members that have an index that is not a power of 2. Therefore the first one should be 1 half, the next one 1 quarter, then we go to 1 over 8 and so on. Hence our subsequence a and k looks like this. One important thing you should note here is that we can't change the overall order the sequence had before. This means that in the case that the sequence visits 1 half only once and also 1 quarter only once. And when we know in addition that 1 quarter comes after 1 half then it's not possible that in the subsequence we have one quarter before one half. In particular, if we have such a monotonic sequence, we already know that the subsequence is also monotonic in the same way. Another thing you should note here is that we can omit a lot of sequence members, even infinitely many. As long as infinitely many remain. Ok, one thing we didn't discuss yet is what happens with the limit when we go to a subsequence. In our example here you see the limit is 0 for this sequence but also for this sequence. Or in other words we don't change the limit here. Indeed this is a general fact that always holds. So if we have a sequence a n where we already know it's convergent with limit a, then any subsequence we can choose is also convergent. Moreover, we also know when we calculate the limit, which means we send k to infinity, we get the same result as before. Ok, maybe that's not so surprising, but at this point you could ask why do we even need subsequences. And the answer is they help us to analyze divergent sequences. For this let's look at an example we already discussed at the beginning of this course. Namely minus 1 to the power n. On the number line this means that we hit the point 1 infinitely many times and also the point minus 1. So clearly this is a sequence that is not convergent. However, we still find convergent subsequences. For example, we could restrict ourselves to the even indices, which means we stay at 1 for the whole sequence. Clearly that's a convergent sequence. And we immediately see the limit, which is 1. Of course we can also consider the odd indices, which means we stay at minus 1 the whole time. This means that we get another subsequence, which is also clearly convergent. However, with another limit, which is minus 1 in this case. Ok, and now these limits we get for subsequences 
are called accumulation values for the sequence an. Indeed, that will be our next definition. So any real number a is called an accumulation value of the corresponding sequence an if there is a subsequence a and k that has a as its limit. Okay, recalling the fact from above, you see that accumulation value is a generalization of the term limit. Because a convergence sequence can only have one accumulation value, namely the limit. However, for a divergent sequence, we could have different accumulation values. Of course, this example here was very simple, so let's look at another picture. So you could imagine a sequence that jumps to different parts on a number line, but then it goes back and it gets closer and closer to four different points. You don't have a limit because the sequence still jumps around, but you get closer and closer to different accumulation values. Or in other words, you could restrict yourself to sequence members that only live here, and then you get a convergence sequence. And of course, you can do the same for the other three parts. Therefore, you could say an accumulation value is just a point on a number line where the sequence accumulates. Another thing I should really tell you is that there are a lot of different names for the same thing. For example, not so surprising, some people call it a cluster point. Or also accumulation point instead of value. However, a little bit more confusing is the term limit point. Of course it makes sense, but please be careful, you could have many limit points for one sequence an. Therefore to avoid this confusion, some people use the term partial limit. However, I will stay at the term accumulation value. Okay, for the end of this video, I give you an alternative definition of accumulation value. Or to put it in other words, a is an accumulation value of the sequence an if and only if, for all epsilon greater than zero, we have that the epsilon neighborhood of a contains infinitely many sequence members of our given sequence an. Of course, this description fits perfectly with our name accumulation or cluster. Now, this statement is not so hard to show. You only have to recall that the epsilon neighborhood of A is given by the interval A minus epsilon to A plus epsilon. Okay, then in the next video, we will talk more about accumulation values and also talk about the bolzano weierstrass theorem. This theorem will tell us something about the existence of accumulation values. Therefore, I hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.